I woke up this morning from a dream that the Lord had given me about what is going to happen in the future. Um, it's a prophetic dream that he showed me um, about how things are, are going to progress in the world and how um, some of our freedoms are, are not going to be what they are now. Um, when the Lord gives us dreams, visions, words, he only gives us part. Um, he does not give us the full picture. Even in the word, it says we only know in part, we only see in part. Um, he didn't give me a timeline on when this is going to happen. Uh, but as we look at the world today, if you are awake in Christ, we can see how things are progressing and how the enemy is conditioning people to believe his lies. Um, we can see that already. We can see his propaganda. Um, so uh, as time moves forward, the enemy is, become, is going to become more bold and, um, you know, things are going to progress even further to, uh, to further his lies to accomplish his mission okay <clears throat> so this this isn't going to be a something that is going to be if we are awake in christ this isn't going to be um surprising to us okay okay so in my dream me and my friend were taking my kids to this cave and um you know some of you may know that there, there are caves that you can explore that, you know, the, the stalactites and stalagmites, I think that's what they're called. They, they light up and, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty view. Um, I was taking my kids to this place, right? And instead of it, it wasn't quite like that. It was, um, it was more like geodes, geodes that were like lighting up, you know, each time you touched one, it would light up a different color. And it, it was a cool little, um, fun little place to take your family. Right. Well, when we were at the cave, um, there were, questions that we had to answer on a piece of paper like it was kind of like a game okay it was a game they would give you a piece of paper you it would ask you a question and you would answer it and I believe it was multiple choice um and then if you know once you gave your answer whether it was right or wrong you could continue on through the cave right and so <clears throat> these ants, these questions had nothing to do with caving and had nothing to do with anything like that. It was questions about God. It was questions about the rapture. It was questions about Jesus. It was questions about end times. Okay. And, uh, you would, they would ask a question and I don't remember the specific questions, um, it would ask the question and then you would mark your answer and proceed to the next, you know, the next part of the cave and you can view all the pretty colors. Okay. Um, it's really hard to explain in words what goes on in a dream because there's some things that are just, you, like it's coming out of my mouth, but it's not quite what I saw. So, um, it is, it, I'm trying to explain it the best that I can. Um, so bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that part of the dream ended. Okay. I'm back at my house and I'm trying to make a phone call. Okay. The next part of the dream, I'm back at my house. I'm trying to make a phone call to a friend it happened to be the same friend that was with me. Okay. I'm trying to make a phone call and I am, I dial the number and 
Um, it rings and then it goes straight into a recording. Okay. And it said, it said, before you can proceed to, you know, before you can prospe- proceed with your call, uh, you have to correct your answers from the cave. And <clears throat> so I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, how, how is this related? Like, how does the phone even know what I wrote down in the cave? It wasn't spoken, you know, I mean, we know, we know how things, you know, you speak something and, and your phone will show you ads about it. You know, I mean, these things have been going on for a while, but writing down the answers about God and Jesus and the rapture and end times. Okay. It wasn't something that I spoke. I wrote them down and it was on a piece of paper in a dark cave. Okay. (laughs) And now all of a sudden I'm not able to make a phone call until I correct my answers. Um, so I knew that the answers that I had given were correct. I knew that the answers that I had given were correct. This phone call, um, it, this recording on the phone call went over each question that I had answered. And I knew that the answers that I had given were correct, but it was, it was telling me that to proceed with my phone call, I had to change my answers. I had to change my answers. And so it went through each question and I didn't want to change my answers because I knew they were right. Okay. But it would not let me, it won't, it wouldn't let me make my phone call if I didn't. So in my dream, I, I even told God, I said, look, I know what I'm going to put is wrong because I know my answers were right in regard, in regards to you. I know my answers were right in the beginning, but I cannot, you, you, you see what's going on here. I cannot proceed with this phone call until I just give them what they want to hear. So I went ahead and gave them what they wanted to hear. Okay. And then it progressed to the phone call. Okay. And, um, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't progress right to the phone call. It went into, um, a, a, commercial. It was just like a regular commercial. Okay. It was a commercial that you had to listen to before you could make your phone call. Like a TV commercial that you had to listen to before you made your phone call. And then it allowed me to call. Okay. Okay. So this is what the Lord is saying. He's saying that, um, the, they're watching (laughs) in the future. I don't know if this is going on right now. I, I, you know, we know that they're watching. We know that they're, they're keeping an eye on us. We know that the enemy has his eye on us as, as the body of Christ. Okay. Um, but what stood out to me in the dream is that it, you know, we were in a dark cave. I wrote down my answers on a piece of paper. It had nothing to do with the phone at all. Okay. And yet they knew, and yet they knew what my belief about God was. They knew what, uh, that I, that I knew the truth. They knew that I knew the truth. Okay. And they wanted to cut off my phone call until I changed my mind. Okay. It was like reconditioning to be able to do your daily tasks. Um, reconditioning, what you believe and in order to progress in your daily tasks, just a regular phone call, you know, it could be other things like entering stores. It could be, you know, whatever, whatever it may be in our daily lives, it's going to be harder to complete for those of us who believe the truth. It's just going to be harder for us to get things done for those of us who believe the truth because the conditioning and the propaganda will be so strong and it's like they will block us from what we have to get done until we agree with them. Okay. The, um, the commercial, 
like after I answered, after I changed my answer to the wrong answers, but gave them the answers that they wanted. Okay. It went right into a commercial and the commercial represented more propaganda. Like it was just a commercial, but, but it represented more propaganda. Like we had to listen through this commercial in order to proceed with what we needed to do. Not only did we have to change our answers, but we also had to be bombarded with more propaganda. Okay. Um, okay. So the Lord says that many, like in my dream, in my dream, I did the wrong thing. Okay. And he said that many people are going to do this. Many people are going to, in order to progress and with their daily tasks in order to get the things done that they need to get done, they're going to compromise. They're going to, you know, say, God, I know you know the truth, but I'm going to lie right now, um, in order to get this task done because that's the only way to do it. Okay. The enemy wants to make us sin. He wants to take away the, um, our ability and our freedoms in order to make us sin against God. And what was horrific about this, it wasn't just a regular lie. It was lies against the holy God, you know, like lies against him and who he is and about his word. Um, you know, I knew I, I was changing my answers to get the phone call made, but um, I knew I was lying, you know, and... Even in my dream, I told God I was lying and that I was sorry, but this is, he said, this is what many people are going to do. Um, they're going to compromise, um, with, uh, with the intention of God, God understanding, God understanding the, the situation that they're in, um, so that. And in their mind, they think that he's okay because he knows the truth, you know, but it's never okay to lie against him. It's never okay to agree with the enemy. It's never okay to agree with the enemy's lies just to get done what you need to get done. So the lies are going to increase. There's going to be blockage. You know, we're going to be blocked in our daily lives. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know if this, this phone thing is actually a thing that's going to happen, but it's, he's showing us that we're, we're going to be blocked in our daily lives, trying to get some things done. Um, unless we agree with the lies of the enemy. Okay. And so he gave me a few passages here. This is Jesus talking in John 8, verse 44. You, of, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Verse 47 says, he who is of God, hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. Okay. Oh, I'm bleeding. Okay. Um, so the devil is the father of all lies. He's the one that's going to control all this happening. Okay. Um, second Timothy three twelve said, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will be persecuted, but evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay. And then first John five nineteen says, we know that God, we know that we are of God. And that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Okay. So. Um, pray on this. I don't know if this is going to be soon. Or if it's going to be. 
you know, later. I don't know if that says before the rapture, after the rapture. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but we can see, as we look into the world right now, we can see that it, it be progressing this way. So, um, what, what we need to do is make sure that if we come up against a situation where we are blocked, where we are unable to do the things that we need to get done, that we stand firm and not compromise our position in Christ. Um, it's very important that we stand firm and not compromise our position in Christ. Even if we are persecuted, even if we are unable to do the things that we need to do, um, even unto death, we need to not compromise and not come into agreement with the enemy because that's his whole goal, his whole goal. And many, many will, many will compromise. Um, he showed me that as I compromised in my dream, um, he showed me that that is a representation of many, many people who will compromise just to continue their daily lives, just to get the things done that they need to get done. Um, let's not be one of those people. Okay. Um, and the Lord says, he's just telling me right now, he's, he's telling me that, that not only in the future, but in our daily walks right now, we are not to compromise. We should not compromise because though the enemy may not be as blatant as what he was in my dream right now, it's still the same enemy at work. It's still the same goal. It's still the same motive. Okay. And he is still wanting us to compromise. And just because it may not be blatantly out there and, um, you know, he still attacks us in the same ways in our daily lives. So we need to be on guard and not come into agreement with him and keep ourselves from compromising, um, in our daily walk now, uh, not just when things get really bad in the future. Okay. I love you guys.